this work it? Okay, so hello everybody. Um, it is June 4th, and that means it is the fourth day of Conspiracy Grotesco, um, where we read um, The Conspiracy Against the Human Race along with Teatro Grotesco, both by Thomas Ligotti. Um, now, now we're starting to get into it here. So, um, today we went over psychogenesis, antemortem, wide awake, and brain work. Um, the first four sections in, um, conspiracy against the human race. Okay. Um... Let me see. So, psychogenesis is about the birth of human consciousness. How we went from um, humans who just did things on instinct to humans who thought about things. Humans who... Um, suddenly realized things were different with them. Um, they, according to the book, they, which is just him guessing, but they looked up into the sky and saw the stars and felt small. Um, one of their people died, and they stood around the body for the first time thinking that there should be something... To, to be done with the body, you know. Um, and they knew that things could never go back to the way they were. And so they had to figure out how to make um, everything better, you know. Um, it's a... It's a weird thought to ponder that there was a time when humans didn't have a conscious or didn't have consciousness and um were able to just do things without um really thinking of repercussions and stuff um and then when we get to antemortem we talk about um or Ligotti talks about the two schools of thought basically you have your um optimist and you have your pe pessimist and the optimist is saying um being alive is all right and the pessimist is like well being alive is kind of like a tragedy you know and um the thought of and I've said this in a video before where if you do feel that life is a tragedy and it's not all right, you kind of need to keep that to yourself because most people will think that it is all right and that it's great. And if you say anything to contradict that, um, there's something wrong with you. Um, and then we get into, um, Wide Awake, which is going deeper on this thought, um, if being alive is all right, but we're actually talking about consciousness now, and there are some philosophers who think that consciousness is, um, a wonderfully good thing. Whereas still others think it's absurd and horrific and um, just knowing that there's an end and there's nothing you can do about it. So <clears throat> this goes along with that. And then when we get to brain work, um, it's kind of speaking about the... Uh, like the nature and workings of consciousness and um, 
there's this part in it that's really great and just like describing like the timeline like there was no life and then there was life and then nature started making life better for everything and then there were humans and then humans began to have consciousness and um the how when and why questions come up and how different philosophers and different schools of thought have all these different views of when um, how and why this all happened and they will continue to debate forever because no one will ever know so um, the idea of consciousness is going to be coming up a lot more in this book and um, kind of the best way I think about it is I don't know if you could hear them but I have dogs and they're small and they're loud and they're yippy um, but at the same time it's like like where the house we're in right now has like a fence around it and um, like me having consciousness is like what's outside that fence I'm gonna like go out and see the world whereas my dogs are like the only thing they're worried about they don't even realize the fence is there until there's something on the other side of it walking around and then their thought is I need to bark at that thing until it goes away um, they never think about like oh wow like what's down the street like when the stars come out at night my dogs don't ever think like oh, I wonder what stars closer than the other um, like my dogs never like worry about where their dog food comes from you know like oh I wonder if the factory that's making my little dog biscuits um, is free of uh, vermin you know like they don't think about any of these things, whereas we obviously do, and we worry about all sorts of shit. Um, they just know to eat, sleep, piss, shit, bark, and if they're not snipped, fuck. And that's it. Like, that's what dogs do. Um, they might play, you know, if, like, you've taught them tricks or something like that. Um, but they never, like, Fred will never ponder, like, what's after this? Like, what happens after this? Fred will never think, oh, I'm going to die eventually. Like, what's that going to be like? You know, like, do, do I need to find a higher being? Do I need to start, like, praying, going to doggy church? Like... These are never thoughts that ever cross our dog's mind, no matter how, like, smart and intelligent we think our dogs are, you know? So, um, it's just, uh, one of those things to start pondering about, because as we get further in this book, um, things will get deeper, and, um, there will be more um, exact um, things being talked about instead of it being such a broad. Like, this is just right now just trying to wet your noodle. So when we do go deep in this, like, you're not drowning and freaking out looking for a life preserver. So anyway, that's the conspiracy against the human race. And um, tomorrow in Teatro Grotesco we're going to be doing Sideshow and other stories so that's going to be a fun um, so get ready for that get on it get, get your read read on um, and I will see you then